Good afternoon, everyone. Could I ask everyone to take their seats? Thank you. Wow, this is a great turnout. Uh, so my name is Jerry Baskey. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Pathways Conference. And on behalf of my other two co-chairs, Dr. Michael Manfredo with Colorado State University and Dr. Lori Marker with the Cheetah Conservation Fund, I'd like to welcome you to the sixth International Pathways Symposium. In September of 2017, we uh, had our fifth Pathways Conference. And at that time, I made a note of saying that we had been successful for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is because of the sponsors who, who generously support this conference. As you might suspect, there are a number of conservation organizations who have been actively involved in the things that we do at this conference. Some of those conservation programs have been with us from the start. For example, USAID, WWF, and the Cheetah Conservation Fund. We have, we've also had sponsors from universities. For example, my own university, Colorado State University, and the, the Nibia University of Science and Technology has generously supported this conference. Uh, we've had support from two different zoos, the Cincinnati Zoo and the San Diego Global Zoo. Uh, as well as some government organizations such as the Ministry of Environment and Tourism in India. Finally, we've had local, local businesses such as First National Bank, the N Nibia Breweries, and Air Nibia generously support our, this conference. Because of that support, we've been able to fund a number of trainees. One of the things that makes Pathways unique is that we offer this four-day training workshop. This year's conference was no exception. We had 44 trainees uh, who received a four-day training seminar that covered a variety of topics. So these early career conservation practitioners were sponsored by our, by our sponsors, and we'd like to thank all of those sponsors uh, right now. Um, if you look around, you'll see some conference name tags that designate individuals who served as instructors for that training program. If you see one of those name tags, thank those people. These individuals generously volunteered and donated their own time and expertise to make the training a success. Another reason that this conference works is because of all the people behind the scenes. Any of you who have ever tried to do a conference know that there's lots and lots of logistics that need to be dealt with in terms of sorting through abstracts, assigning abstracts to sessions, in terms of dealing with uh, problems that people are having relative to registration. If you, if you take that conference and put it across two continents, North America and Africa, the challenges grow, grow even more. All right, so I'd like to personally acknowledge and thank Linda Sawyers, Wes White, Kaylin uh, Clemens, Will Hardwick, Faith Chambera, uh, Gabby Fleur, Jennifer Doom, Tess Rubitsky, and Nadia LaCroix. These are the people who, who make this conference work. Lori and I give up and we make these five minute speeches and it looks like we're doing a lot, but it's the people I just listed that really make this, this conference happen. I'd also like to extend a special thanks to Cindy Perry, and Lucinda Crabtree, and all of the folks at the Crabtree Foundation. Uh, for their generous donation in creating the new Pathways logo. Uh, you see the logo up there in the top, top left-hand corner. Uh, this is the first time we've had a logo. Our first Pathways conference was in 2008. Mike Manfredo and I knew at that time that we needed to have a logo. Unfortunately, creation of logos was not exactly in our skill set. And, uh, and our first few attempts failed quite miserably. So we tried, but the, the logos never really worked very well. And as a result, we never really have had an official logo. I think what Lucinda and, and Cindy have done is to create a, a true logo that re reflects what this conference is all about. It becomes a brand for us that we can use um, throughout the year. So Cindy and Lucinda, thank you very much. As I said in my opening remarks uh, back in September at the fifth Pathways Conference, a third reason that Pathways is successful is because of all of you. All right? I, I go to a fair number of conferences, 
Pathways is the only conference that I attend where I literally want to see every presentation and go to every session. That like never happens. All right, so because of you, we've all made this, this conference a, a success. This is the second time that this conference has been in Africa. The first time was in 2016 in Kenya. I thought that was a success. I'm pretty sure this one is going to be a success as, as well. Our next Pathways Conference will be in September 2018. It will be at Gosler, Germany, uh, at the World Heritage Site, uh, which is a gateway community into the Haars National Park. Dr. Ike Badruszkowski in, in Germany will be co-hosting that Pathways with us. There is additional information about that conference in your, in your registration packet, and I think there's also a flyer in there, plus an address that you can get more information on. Now, this year we're gratified to have representatives from 28 different countries with, a, with 44 trainees, as I've already mentioned. We have approximately 200 res 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 registrations at the moment, and that number is growing sort of as we speak. There were a total of 187 total submissions in individual abstracts and organized sessions with 150 unique presenters organized into eight sessions. So thank you everyone for once again making this Pathways Conference a success. At this point, I'd like to introduce our first plenary speaker for this evening, Dr. Lori Marker. Lori received her doctorate degree from Oxford University in 2002. Currently, she is the executive director of the Cheetah Conservation Fund, as well as the founder of that organization. She began her work with cheetahs in 1974. Between 74 and 88, while she was at the Oregon Wildlife Safari in the US, USA, Lori developed one of the most successful captive cheetah breeding programs in North America. She first came to Namibia in 1977, when she brought a captive-born, hand-raised cheetah to Namibia. The goal of that exercise was to determine if cheetah could be taught to hunt or whether it was a purely instinctual process. That's a first-of-a-kind kind of research to understand if there's a chance that captive-born cheetahs can be reintroduced into the wild. For the next 10 years, she continued traveling to Africa to learn more about the wild cheetah, uh, problems and what could be done to assist those populations. In the early 1980s, with collaboration from the National Zoo and the National Cancer Institute, Lori developed and identified cheetah's lack of gene genetic variation that were causing some of the problems in, of, of survival. In 1988, she became the executive director of the Center for New Opportunities in Animal Health Sciences for the Smithsonian's National Zoo and she continues to serve as a research fellow with the National Zoo. In 1990, Lori set up the first not-for-profit cheetah conservation fund and moved to Namibia to uh, develop a permanent uh, conservation research center for the wild cheetah. In 1996, she was made vice chair of the World Conservation Union's Species Survival Commission's Cat Specialist Groups and now serves as a member of that uh, core management group. If you look at her Vita, her awards are numerous and many. So, for example, uh, Dr. Marker has been recognized as a one, a, uh, a one of Time Magazine's heroes for the planet in 2000. She received the Zoological Society of Society's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2008. More recently, she was awarded the 2010 Tyler Prize for Environmental Achievement. In 2013, she was awarded the Andrew D. White uh, Professor at Large at Cornell University. And in 2015, she received three distinct awards, the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Technology Pioneer Award, the Ulysses S. Seal Award for Innovations in Conservation, and the 2015 Eleanor Roosevelt Van Kill Medal Award. You can find a complete list of all those awards. I don't want to spend the next hour talking about them, but, but uh, she's, she's quite an amazing woman. So at this point, I'd like to introduce our first plenary speaker, Dr. Lori Martin. Just ruin whatever's going on here. 
Thank you, Jerry. Sure. Thank you for all being here to Pathways Africa 2018. And for the last year, I'm sure, everybody who knows me knows the words Pathways Africa 2018. And you're all here, you all made it to Namibia, and we're just so very, very, very pleased to have you all here. It, again, would never have happened had it not been for uh, the different sponsors that Jerry did mention. And one of my um, closest um, right hand and, and left hand in this was Faith. And Faith, if you're around, if I could ask you please to stand up. Faith is the secretariat also from the Large Carnivore Management Association here and has worked, we've worked together for um, several years trying to help people know more about um, the issues with large carnivores and that of human wildlife conflict. So Faith, thank you so very much. <laughs> and again, Jerry mentioned um, all the various people who have put so much into this. And when I said, yes, I thought it was a great idea, um, it, it's like all of a sudden you don't have very many friends anymore because everybody says it was a great idea, but then I, it's one of those things that, well, who's gonna help and how's it gonna help? And then people sort of walk away. So I, most of the people who know me know that I'm very persistent and um, we are very, very pleased. We've worked for, I've worked actually for a number of years with Colorado State and it came about, I think, back um, around, 10 to 15 years ago when there was the first conference, world conference um, on, on the environment down in South Africa. And Mike was down there when we were running one of the streams. And the stream was on um, conflict. And we, a group of us got together, we were global and we were putting our heads together on global conflict with with wildlife and what could be done. And we thought that there were toolboxes out there. We knew that there was a lot that had been developed. And we thought, how can we bring this together? And we all went on our merry ways and another kind of 10 years went uh, along. And a few years ago, the next, um, I guess, World Congress came together. And um, it was, I think, in South America. And, Mike brought us all together. We all couldn't come to the meeting, but he brought all of what we had done over the last 10 years together, and we came up with a session and a paper on that. And from there, um, in between that, I had been coming and going to the Pathways Congresses, which have been in Colorado. And then when Pathways was in Kenya in 2016, of course, I went um, with a few of my staff and was very, very, very pleased. What I liked most about it was the fact of the training aspect. I don't know if there are any other conference in the world that actually brings people together and um, trains that number of people by getting a lot of sponsors together and we basically said, come on, help. We can bring together, and we did. Uh, we brought 44 people from 12 different African countries and have just spent the last uh, three, almost four days together. Here is the team of not only all the trainees, but all the trainers. And again, as Jerry said, the trainers all came together. They were hand-picked, and thank you trainers for saying yes when I asked you, because there was definitely a flow to how um, I wanted the hand-picked trainees to be trained in the aspects around the human dimensions. And human dimensions are all around us, and everything's about people. And so many people who work in the field of wildlife don't necessarily like people, maybe they like people, don't want to deal with people, don't want to talk to people, and yet um, wildlife needs people. And what we need to do is we need to figure out how the best ways are going to be so that we can engage people not only to look at conservation, but look at ways that we can change the world. And I asked our 44 trainees, or actually suggested to them, 
that now that they've come together here in Namibia, that they will be together for the rest of their lives, I hope, and they will be the ones that are going to help change the face of Africa so that our wildlife will live, our people will be flourish, and the reason why we invited Pathways to Namibia is Namibia is a leader in conservation and a leader in the work that we do with our communities.